Hello, my name is Dr. Konstantin Schimmert, and this is my conversation with Ronald Sanford, aka Ariel. In our last episode, we opened the possibility for our listeners to ask questions to Ronald, and I have forwarded them to him, And uh, but we have at the moment a technical problem. Ronald um, has a little tablet from the prison, and this tablet somehow is dysfunctional at the moment and so it has to be repaired. So this is the reason why I asked for some patience. Um, he will answer the questions, um, but it will take some time. But what I can tell you, I, I learned from Ellie that Ronald had really tears in his eyes when he read your comments, when he read your questions. He was so touched that there are so many people outside in the world who are taking care for him, who have so good thoughts for him. And he was really, really touched. So thank you so much for taking care, for being with us. And um, now today I have a little piece of um, written piece of paper Ronald sent to me. He wrote this. I don't know when he really wrote it, but I think it's a very touching and interesting summary of the whole story. So. Watch this. 13 years, double murder and 170 years on a plea bargain. On the 18th of August, 1987 in Indianapolis, Indiana, USA, two young boys, 15-year-old Sean Lamont Rowe and 13-year-old Ronald Lee Sanford Jr. approached the home of two elderly ladies Anna Louise Harris, 83 years old, and Julie Gray Belmar, 87 years old. The boys approached the home under the pretense of doing yard work. The woman denied their offer of assistance, and that's when things escalated. Rather than simply walk away, the two boys forced their way into the home, and what followed shocked the nation. The bodies of the two elderly sisters were later found stabbed to death in the basement of their home. In late 1987, Sean Rowe, the older of the two boys, was arrested. Upon his arrest, Rowe immediately requested a plea deal, where he would testify against Sanford in exchange for a lesser sentence. Rowe would later claim he was a bystander to the robbery and double murder. Following his plea, Deal, most of the charges against Roe were dropped except for assisting a robbery, to which he pled guilty on the 22nd of March 1989. For this he received a sentence of 5 years, 11 months and 30 days. Roe was released in March 24, 1991, having served 2 years and 2 days of his sentence. As his trial approached, Ronald Lee Sanford was advised to plead guilty to double murder, robbery with bodily harm and bulgary, on the understanding his age and the fact he was pleading guilty would be taken into account. However, on April 14, 1989, Marion County convicted, pled guilty, Ronald Sanford and sentenced him to 50 years for the murder of the one sister, 50 years for the murder of the other sister, 50 years for robbery involving serious bodily injury, and 20 years for bulgary. The judge stated that all the sentences would run consecutively, meaning Sanford would face 170 years in jail for his part in the crime. He will not get a parole hearing until 2070. It seems evident there were numerous missed opportunities to help this troubled young boy before the events of that fateful day in 1987. He was let down by a system that should have existed to protect him from the trauma he endured during critical years of his life. He was then incorrectly deemed beyond rehabilitation at the age of 13, when his brain was still developing. He was deemed beyond help when no meaningful professional assistance was given to him. 
But despite this and the fact that he could have just resigned himself to a life in prison and behaved accordingly, he chose to embark on a journey of hope and self-development. He chose to educate himself, to pursue interests, to be a good person, one different from the stereotypical masses around him. He is clearly a well-respected and highly thought of person within his immediate environment and beyond. His intelligence and thirst for knowledge is astounding. Having spent the last three decades reading and pursuing academic qualifications, he gained his GED, aged 15, an associate's degree in biblical studies, a bachelor's degree in organizational management, and a computer business certificate degree from Ivy Tech. He is also a certified firefighter with a public safety number on file with the Department of Homeland Security, as well as having completed the Department of Harbors Firefighter Apprenticeship. He has worked as a TV repair te technician at the facility where he was allowed to complete the Department of Labor's Electrical Mechanics Apprenticeship Program. He has been the head coach of the state's varsity basketball team and a member of the Toastmasters Seriously Speaking Gable Club. Mr. Sanford has also done a great deal of public speaking, particularly to youth groups who have visited the prison in an attempt to steer children who are exhibiting behavioral issues down a more positive path. The fact that he has a positive outlook, the impetus to achieve positive outcomes in life and the self-discipline to do so, despite the fact that as a child he was essentially sentenced to die in prison and despite spending three decades surrounded by violence and negativity is outstanding. There is no doubt He has undergone immense growth personally over the time he has been incarcerated and is an absolute credit to himself. Mr. Sanford represents the quintessential example of the Miller issue in Indiana. He was given an extraordinary long sentence, 170 years. He has been incarcerated for over a third of a century since 1987 and was barely a teenager, 13, at the time of his arrest. In spite of the state of Indiana passing what it called Paul's Law, a law changing Indiana's sentencing guidelines relating to juvenile offenders after a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old were sentenced to 25 years each for conspiring to murder and then leave the state for in Arizona. Mr. Sandford was not allowed to use this law even though he was barely a teenager at the commission of the offenses committed. However, since Roper v. Simons 25 was decided, the Supreme Court has reaffirmed a prohibition against sentencing juveniles to death. And although this question of death versus life in prison has become one of form over over substance, I'll tell you life is life and death is death. They are polar opposites. A juvenile who spends the rest of life in prison and dies there as a result of a sentence rendered by a criminal court, they have served a death sentence. And I would argue is contrary to the spirit of Roper versus Simons. Mr. Sanford remains firmly in the fight for his eventual release. He is scheduled to return to court in March of 2021 for an evidentiary hearing. Nothing is set in stone regarding the outcome. He needs as much support as possible. Call, write, email elected leaders and people of influence you think can assist Mr. Sanford's fight for freedom. So. This is this piece of writing I got from Ronald. I think it speaks for itself. And again, I would 
ask you to support this case. You can make a donation on our GoFundMe account. You can sign into the petition and you can surely, it's free of charge, follow this channel and like our little episodes and hit the bell button. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye and take care. Thank you.